Hi there, this is Alex Lubomirsky. I hope you're well. Uh, today I want to tell you about how I didn't kill a rabbit and how it led me to being a successful fashion photographer. Kind of weird, but uh, you'll understand why. Uh, so when I was about 13 or 14, I think, um, I was uh, offered by my friends and my family they were going to teach me how to hunt. Um, and so they took me to Scotland and we all went out. And I, as we were walking along the path over the hills or the forest, whatever it was, this rabbit popped out. And it was only like maybe, I would say, 40, 40 50 feet away. And so the friend of the family gave me the gun, cocked it for me, said, right, point directly through there and shoot. And I remember thinking to myself, I remember looking through and thinking, if I pull the trigger, I'm going to hit this rabbit. And something inside me kind of switched off. And I remember going like this, pointing the gun up into the sky, just a tiny bit above, shooting it, missing the rabbit, the rabbit ran off. And a friend of the family said, looked at me in kind of bemusement, was like, that was an easy shot, you could have got that. And I, and I remember saying to him, you know what, I feel a bit sick. Uh, I think I'm coming down with something. Can I go back to the, uh, to the house? So I went back to the house and there was a lady there um, who had a broken leg, so she couldn't go hunting. And she was sketching. And she saw me sitting in the, in the, in the living room, bored as hell, not knowing what to do. So she said, look here, take this sketch pad, start drawing, give, give yourself something to do. So I said, what should I draw? And she said, well, draw me. So I drew a picture of her with her broken leg and her cast. And um, she, when I showed it to her, she said, you're pretty good actually, this is great. Draw me something else. And so for the next two or three days, I didn't go hunting anymore, and I just stayed in the living room drawing with her. And she said at the end, she said, all this is really great. When you go back to school, show your art teacher this stuff, because I think you've got a, you've got a talent. Anyway, to cut a long story short, I went back to school, I showed my art teacher, he saw that I had something in art, he pushed me in the art world. I'd won the art prize at school, he kept pushing me, kept pushing me. Uh, I went on and did art at... Uh, uh, middle school and uh, upper school and um, my art led to graphic design which led to fashion design which led to photography which led to where I am today so you could say that uh, not killing that rabbit choosing not to kill an animal allowed me to find my path to be a uh, to find my career so that brings me on to my, my vegan journey so a lot of people have been asking me over the last few days especially while we've been in quarantine about how did I get started in veganism, was it difficult, any tips, etc, etc. I guess because a lot of people right now are trying things at home. You know, they're trying veganism, they're trying meditation, they're trying whatever. Um, so I'm going to quickly tell you my story about veganism and how I got started in it. It was about seven or eight years ago, my wife had gone to a, um, a food course where she learnt a lot about so sort of the healing benefits of food. And she came back and said, we have to change everything. And we made a rather silly decision of going headlong straight into raw veganism, uh, which was the worst decision to do because we had no idea what we were doing. We hadn't sort of uh, prepared. We hadn't learnt enough about what we should be eating instead of meat and fish. And um, we, we, so immediately after a few weeks, we were sort of skin and bones because we hadn't eaten anything. We were just eating like sort of salads and a few vegetables here and there. Completely wrong way to go about it. And that's a mistake that a lot of people make when they go vegan or, or plant-based, is they think, well, I'm not going to have meat, I'll have a salad. Salad's not going to fill you up. <laughs> you need to really get with the vegetables and the quinoa and the rice and the beans and the lentils. and um, Yeah, you've got to sort of prepare, you've got to really sort of uh, research how to get your you know, normal intake. And also, when you start off being a vegan, you'll find that you know, the meat used to take such a big place in your belly. And so you'll find that you, you, you almost need to eat a bit more of the, the rice and the vegetables, etc. But gradually, your stomach will adapt to this lack of this big meatball that you have in there. And your stomach will get smaller or it'll adapt and uh, you won't need to eat like a sort of uh, the same amount as a pound of beef or whatever you have before. Um, so anyway, so I started, uh, so admittedly, I went into veganism for health reasons. I'd always had this thing in the back of my head that I didn't want to know about 
how meat was made and the the factory farming and everything it was just like i just wanted to sort of just block it out like i just sort of uh, uh ignorance is bliss and um so even though i knew in the back of my head i thought i hope one day i can be a vegetarian or i hope one day i mean the word vegan was so foreign to me it was so far off in the distance i would never have dreamt that i would have gone vegan um but when my wife came back she said we got let's go vegan i was like let's do it let's give it a go and um best decision i ever 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 made so i always knew i wanted to go vegetarian for the animal's sake right um but i never got around to it it was one of those things i just kept pushing off kept pushing off so when i finally went vegan it was for health reasons now the weirdest thing happened about a month after i went vegan i remember going to a restaurant and the person I was eating lunch with, they ordered a steak. And I had some sort of br sautéed broccoli with some rice or some potatoes or something. And I suddenly looked over at their food as they were cutting into it. And it was medium rare. And I remember cut them cutting into it and I looked over at the food, the, the, the meat. And I suddenly had this realization. I was like, wow, they're cutting through flesh. And I felt a little bit turned off by it. Um, and I looked at my food and I thought, isn't it funny how my broccoli is called broccoli and how the, the cow flesh is called steak? And I looked at somebody else's um, food and it's like pig flesh is called bacon. And I looked back at my food and it's like spinach is called spinach. So and then you start to start to realize stuff. You start to go down this path of discovery and sort of realization of all the things that have been renamed and re repurposed uh, through your life. So it's, and I, I don't blame anybody for eating meat. I mean, I, I was brought up on meat. I used to live in Botswana. We had steak twice a day. Uh, I ate enough meat in my, in my childhood to last three lifetimes. But it's funny how you start to sort of then see how, you know, we're, 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 we're fed things. Like you're fed a burger as a child uh, and the logo is like a laughing clown. And then you're fed these uh, milk with a happy cow on the side um, with children in a green grass meadow and stuff. And it's kind of funny. So you start to sort of realize stuff. Uh, and very quickly, I started to become, your, your, your compassion starts to grow. And you start to realize that, wow, I, I'm so shocked that I was even eating this stuff. Um, because of the cruelty to the animals, that, that side of things. And then you start to say, you know what, I'm going to watch this stuff that I never wanted to watch. Just because I want to sort of reaffirm all these thoughts that I'm having. And then you start watching anything, any documentary. You go and uh, look at documentaries. I'll put a list underneath the documentaries you can watch. And it's kind of shocking. And you kind of think, wow, it's amazing that I never knew all this stuff. Or it's amazing that I knew what I was going to see and I chose not to see it. Anyway, so I, uh, I then started to get rid of all the, um, I started to go hardcore. I went like no honey, no, no milk, no everything, no, I think I started off with eggs, but then I slowly got rid of those. So but after about a year of being, starting off veganism, I was completely vegan. Um, obviously, you feel amazing. You feel great. You've got so much energy. You don't have that massive food coma after you've had a big meal. Um, and you start just eating good stuff. You start noticing more about what you eat. I spend a lot more time in the kitchen now, which I love. I know that probably sounds like a terrible thing to some people, but you start to enjoy cooking. You know, you start to take note of what is going into your body rather than just going meat, french fries, or whatever it is you eat. Um, you know, you start to sort of create, you start to learn about lentils and start to learn about vegetables and you start to learn about what food holds what benefits for you and the amount of uh, nutrition you get from each food um, and I think it's a really good thing because you become conscious about what you're eating and uh, I think being conscious about anything in life and being aware of anything in your life is a, is a hugely important thing you know rather than just being a robot and just going you know eating whatever you've been eating for the whole of your life just because that's what you've been fed um, so I'd highly recommend just Googling, it's really simple, really simple research. Obviously the question is, where do you get your protein? It's the question that a lot of vegans laugh at because there's this misconception that you need this incredible amounts of protein to survive. Do your research, find out how much protein you actually need 
in your life and then see how much protein you can get from vegetables and from uh, beans and lentils and rice and quinoa etc etc um, obviously there's things that you will miss I, w I was a chocolate freak dark chocolate freak when my wife met me I think all I had in my fridge was wine and dark chocolate and uh, but you find substitutes dark chocolate vegan dark chocolate vegan ice cream vegan cakes vegan etc 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 milks all sorts of different types of milk i'm a big big uh, hemp seed milk fan right now which has got so much nutritional value um, and that one you don't even need to soak you just literally put it in the blender water and you've got milk uh, and my kids love it uh, uh, my kids are not 100 percent vegan when i cook for them I try to do as much vegan stuff for them as possible. But they know that I'm vegan and they sort of ask me about stuff and they say, no, daddy can't eat that because he's vegan. And so they're aware of why I don't eat it. And um, so I'm leaving it up to them to make their, their own choices, but I'm teaching them both sides. Um, and that's really it. Uh, so I would highly recommend it. I would say, um, I always say that you, you go into veganism for one of four reasons. You either go in for health, for the animals, for the environment, think about all that, all that uh, Amazonian rainforest that has been chopped down to not only f um, uh, uh, feed animals, but also to to let them graze, uh, and all the methane and all the the, the 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 sewage that comes off these factory farms, the toxicity that goes into our waterways. So that's the third reason. So you've got um, health for the animals, for the environment, or for some sort of spiritual growth whatever you want to call it and people ask me what the spiritual growth is and like i said when i after about a month of being vegan and i saw that somebody was actually eating an animal's flesh um and you start to see animals as beings right i mean we love dogs and we love cats and we love all these other things cows pigs they're all the same thing they're all animals and they're all sentient beings um and so you go in for one of these four reasons and the fantastic news is the bonus prize is that it doesn't matter what doorway you take into veganism once you're in you reap all the rewards and you sow all the rewards so if you go in for health it doesn't matter if you just go in for health you end up saving the animals saving the environment and you become a bit more compassionate whether you like it or not um, and it works with all the other ones you just automatically get all the benefits so if you're thinking about going vegan or plant-based, don't worry about going vegan overnight as well. Take baby steps, go meatless Monday. Um, I know a lot of the times it's difficult when you have a family because you know, you've know got to think about what you're cooking and what you can eat and what they can eat. Um, but just try baby steps. You, know, you don't have to be uh, jump over the mountain in one foul swoop. You can take step by step in the right direction and gradually you'll get to the top of the mountain. And, um, and that's it. So good luck. If you have any other questions, um, text me uh, or put messages under here or I'm sure you'll find some way to send me a message. Um, and good luck and uh, go vegan.